Welcome to a ship review and analysis of the Hercules Starlifter C2. My name is Digital Master, and in this video, we will discuss the Hercules Starlifter C2 and my interpretation of its purpose in the verse. We would then follow up with some considerations regarding its closest ship or vehicle competition and finish by providing my opinion on whether you should consider adding this to your fleet. If this is your first time watching one of my reviews, allow me to share my format. To begin, I go over the ship or vehicle's description and stock loadout. From there, we discuss the ship's analysis and who I personally believe the ship is designed for. I then provide an analysis for the pledge price of the ship and share my subjective opinion on if you should consider picking one up via pledging. If that sounds good to you, let's get started. We'll begin with reading the manufacturer's description. Utilizing the patented Hercules military grade space frame and expanding cargo capacity while sacrificing barely any firepower, the C2 has taken the private sector by storm. It has become the industry standard for racing teams, ship dealers and manufacturers, construction orgs, mining corporations, and even large-scale touring entertainment outfits. As far as notable features and strengths, this ship is a purely dedicated cargo hauler and vehicle transporter. This ship can carry a massive load of cargo per run and is considered to be one of, if not the premier vehicle transporting ship available today. I'll be honest, if I need to move vehicles in any considerable quantity, this is a ship that I would be looking for. As far as notable weaknesses, the Hercules weapon and turret placement indicate that it is designed specifically to defend against targets or opposition coming from the aft or rear of the ship and the bottom to a limited degree. I emphasize this because the exact turret placement is focused in the back of the ship while the pilot controlled weapon is at the top front of the ship. So as you might imagine, this leaves a portion of the top as well as the front portion of the bottom of the ship completely exposed to attack. Additionally, if trying to defend the ship on its port and starboard side, that may prove challenging as well. As a result, this ship is not intended for dedicated air-to-air -air or spacefaring combat, in my personal opinion. For the ship's stock loadout, it has a one size 3 Ginzel power plant. This power plant is industrial grade C. It also has a one size 3 quote unquote comma quantum drive, which is an industrial grade C. It has two size 3 thermal core coolers also industrial grade C and for its shields it has two size three strongholds which is industrial grade C. It has three size two surveyors for its radar capabilities and these are industrial grade A's. For its thrusters it has 12 size one main thrusters, 14 size one maneuvering thrusters and two size one retro thruster. Now we're going to go into its weapons package. And here we're looking at two size 4 gimbaled revenants controlled by the pilot with a total DPS of 1,343. As for turrets, it has two, carrying a total of four size 4 M6A laser cannons. These dish out a total of 2,072 DPS. For cargo, it has a whopping capacity of 696 SCUs. With that loadout, this ship is ready to move a few crates and vehicles around the verse. So what do I believe is this ship's primary purpose? I believe it's short to long distance cargo hauling and vehicle transport. Any dedicated cargo haulers will want to take a very long look at this ship. If, as a cargo hauler, you are not utilizing the hull series from MISC, or if you prefer to increase your defensive capabilities over those ships while maintaining a very reasonable cargo capacity, then you are probably not going to want to overlook this ship. As far as alternative use cases, I can imagine that organizations will use this ship for logistical support during combat or industrial related operations, or other relevant operations. This ship can be useful for the goal of resupplying ground fighting forces or organization mobility in other ways, such as quickly moving supplies and or ground vehicles from one location to another. So 
So who would I say the C2 is for? Well, as mentioned, I believe there is a great use case for any organization that intends to conduct medium to large military operations or really any other relevant operations, such as industrial or logistics related. If playing solo, I am hard pressed to suggest this vehicle due to its already limited protection coupled with the fact that for defense a single pilot will only have command of the top turrets. However, CIG will be implementing what's called server blades and hireable NPCs at some point in the future. As a result, when this is implemented, solo play will be a completely viable option. So one more thing worth noting is that this ship, although not as armored as its other variants, still possesses medium armor. Now according to the Q&A, this is on par with what the base MISC Starfarer will have, and these ships will still be formidable in regards to armored defense. With that said, if traveling into contested or dangerous territory, having escorts will be necessary in my personal opinion. So, for the pledge analysis, let me start by sharing the cost of pledging for this ship with real money. During its concept, this ship was on pledge for a war bond price of $300 US dollars and a standalone pledge price of $360 US dollars. Now, as usual, before making a decision, you may want to take the following into consideration. And again, it's going to be ship armor. Ship armor is not yet implemented, yet once it is implemented, it is expected to play a large role in the defense of this ship. Physical armor values will impact which weapons, and therefore which ships, pose an actual threat to the C2. In the current implementation of the game, armor is an arbitrary number value, as you might see in most games. Anything that makes contact and is considered a weapon, ordnance, or something carrying significant force will chip away at that value. However, with the ambitious nature of the game that is Star Citizen, Armor will be physicalized in that it will carry properties that closely mimic reality far beyond what most games offer today. Therefore, you won't see smaller weapons like size 1 or maybe even size 2s doing much or any damage to the C2's medium armor, as those weapons just does not have the power or penetration capabilities of its larger counterparts. So with all these things considered, my final suggestion is the following. If you are one to play with a group or your org, and the intended playstyle involves cargo running or logistical support, and there aren't many existing owners within your org that own this ship, then I would personally recommend grabbing this one. Alternatively, you and your org can earn this in-game. As usual, I will always recommend earning ships in-game as a primary choice. However, if you really like this ship and want to further support the development of Star Citizen, this is definitely not a bad choice at all. So with all this information, let's discuss one more thing. There are a lot of ships in Star Citizen and many flavors of the same type as well. So in this segment, I wish to discuss the C2's direct competition per my own observations. For my criteria, I am going to purely base this on the Hercules C2's intended role. In this case, the C2 being a cargo hauler. So, for its cargo hauling capabilities, you have the following alternatives that come close to what the C2 offers and may be of interest to you. For starters, the MISC Starfarer, which has a max of 291 SCU. For this comparison, you lose significant SCU, but you do gain more defensive firepower. It's also a little bit less expensive. The second, comparison is the Caterpillar, which holds a total of 576 SCU. Now, the Caterpillar has similar weapons loadout, but it does lack the defensive capabilities in the way of armor. Number 3, the Carrick, which has a max of 456 SCU. For this, you lose significant cargo capacity and sacrifice any pilot-controlled firepower. Number 4 is the sister variant to the C2, which is the Hercules M2, which carries a max of 522 SCU of cargo space. Here you lose significant cargo as well, but you do gain better armor and defense. So what I attempt to do in most cases is find a ship that comes as close as possible to the entire use case of the ship that I am reviewing. 
And so in this case, I believe its closest competition in respect to its entire use case argument would be the Drake Caterpillar. And I chose the Caterpillar because it has a similar weapons loadout, sacrificing the least amount of cargo space. Now, there is something to say about the C2's yet to be implemented medium armor, so though I do consider the Caterpillar to be one if not the closest competitor, the C2 in my personal opinion really does stand on its own. Now finally, and probably most important to most of you who are considering the C2, the Caterpillar won't be transporting tanks or similar sized vehicles. And unless CIG provides swappable modules that support vehicle transport for the Caterpillar in general, this would be a significant drawback when you do compare it to the C2. However, that's all for this review and I hope that it was helpful to you in some way. Please let me know your thoughts below in the comments and uh, don't forget to leave a like and subscribe if you want to see more of this content. Thank you and hopefully we will meet in the verse.